Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Liberate Yourself podcast. I'm Trista Dedman, and in this space, we discuss many metaphysical ways to cultivate our personal sovereignty amidst transformational times. This is the first transmission of 2019 after I took a little hiatus for the holidays and to move from my residence in the middle of Seattle to a nice landing spot with family not far away so my partner and I can feel into where we want to live next. This has been a huge change in my life, but has brought much relief already. Um, My aim is to live somewhere where the nature is more dense and hopefully escape the mechanization of urban growth. I want to thank everyone for their patience and also thank the beloved patrons of this podcast who are supporting me through Patreon. You can find out more and join us in becoming a supporter yourself for only $5 a month by visiting patreon.com slash liberate yourself. I'm so excited and honored to bring you this conversation with Stephen, who is known as Selenic online. Stephen is an Irish artist, writer, traveler, and deep thinker who is currently spending some time in Vietnam. His projects are presented as Anthropocosmic Expansion on Patreon and Instagram and definitely worth checking out. In our conversation, we get into his own story of coming online in the last few years through astrology, and we have a deep discussion about what it means to work with our ancestors and the land we are connected to. I find his mind and work fascinating, and I know you will too. So let's get to it. Thank you so much for being here again, and thanks for being up late. It's 11 p.m. in Vietnam, and it's 8 a.m. in Seattle, and this is what we do. (laughs) This is what you got to (laughs) do. So, Stephen, I've been trying to... I've found myself being challenged with putting words to what you do, and I almost, like, don't want to put words to it. Um, but it's definitely an inner, and I'd like you to explain it where your current work is, but I feel like it's an intersection of art, philosophy, alchemy, of course, esotericism, and the word you use is anthropocosm, which I would also like you to, I know that it's beyond words, but, um, just let us know where you are in the world and what you're what you're currently working on. Sure. So um, at the moment, I'm living in Vietnam. I guess all of the things that that I've been sharing, they cut a lot of intersections. And I I mean, it's just natural, I guess. It's not something that I have thought about too much, you know. Um, I started to draw again in the summer of 2017, after about seven years of no art at all, it took me a long time. Like I decided once before I actually started drawing and that I wanted to do art once again, but it took me a very long time to stop judging first. Mm-hmm. I had to go through this entire process where I shifted from a kind of consumer mind into a producer mind. Wow, I love that. <laughs> that was a, like one of the most important lessons I've, I've learned so far, you know, because mm-hmm. before I could even allow myself to sit down in front of a blank piece of paper with a pencil, I was freaking out. I was like, I've got nothing to draw, like, it's not going to look good, how am I going to do this, you know, before I could even try and do anything, I was already saying, no, it's not good enough. The blocks were coming up, yeah. So it took me a while just to to get through that, and then ever since then, I've just been riding that wave, I guess. Mm-hmm. Did you say riding about whatever? <laughs> I said riding that wave. Oh, okay. Good, good. <laughs> And also writing about whatever, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say it's much more than whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You know. No, I love how you describe that. I'm actually having those same feelings myself. Uh, I like that you put it moving from consumer 
or like, and I've kind of had that conversation in my head as well for a, a few years now is the difference between business and yeah, art and, and producing, creating, and not thinking about what the end result is going to be or how to commodify it. Right. Yeah. And that's such a huge leap because we are trained to be a consumerist society essentially. Um, but I love your artwork. I have one of your original pieces on my altar right now, and it is, it is, it's beyond words. I mean, it's sacred geometry, but I can tell that, you know, you're, I can tell that it's also very, well, organic isn't the right word. Sacred geometry is the most organic, but I can tell that it is your creativity. You're, you're not just like replicating you know, what, what has come before. Like it's something that is unfolding from within you and it's very powerful. Your work though. Um, and I, I've told you this before, the feedback I had for you was the, the artwork and the, uh, words itself, the description, um, really go together and play off of each other so well. And your writing is, very, very deep. I've, um, I was actually reading your posts last night, um, which of course we're going to get into this later, um, about, uh, immigration from Ireland and, um, our ties to the land and all that. I feel like that's a really huge theme where you are right now and what you're, what you're working with. Um, like I said, that's a big topic I wanted to, to get into in a bit, but, um, do you want to share, because a lot of us are waking up right now, that's kind of the, the most general term, or coming online, I suppose, and we all kind of have our own stories with that. Do you want to share kind of your, your background and recent transformations? Sure, I can try. <laughs> um, I guess the the turning point for me was... In 2016, um, uh, I I just it was in August of that year when I moved to Naples from Dublin, um, and yeah, life became different pretty instantly. You know, I was um, I found myself in this kind of tight knit social circle, this group um, of people that I was living with and working with too. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to explain, but I guess when when I arrived there, I was kind of on the back of this uh, depression that was had been kind of rolling slowly and subtly into something bigger and bigger. I I think probably since I was like 22, so a few years beforehand. Um, I'm 26 now. Um, and yeah, that. That time when I spent in Naples, I was living there for for about nine months, I think, um, and it was just a really transformative time. Um, I think, you know, I really owe it to the people that I met there and, the, and my friends, the friends that I met there, and, and all the time we spent together. You know, we had a really great time together, um, and I really owe it to them. You know, that energy just brought me brought me back up somewhere, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was also during that time where um, a very good friend that I made there introduced me to astrology and they were able to to really bring me into it like on a very personal level, you know? Because I'd been interested in astrology before then but I, I couldn't really get to grips with it just via the internet, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it, it was just life changing to learn astrology from a human being. Yes. You know, um, speak the same so language that, with someone else. Yeah, it's it's yeah. very different. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember actually when you had Audrey on this podcast recently, right? Yeah. Um, when she was talking to you about this relationship that she had with a friend where they were both kind of like energetically galvanizing each other, you know, uh-huh. to, to 
they're both pushing each other into different realms and and that's exactly the kind of um dynamic that that my friend and I have and have had since then you know so we wow. both really we both really connected and and so that brought about so much change as well and Fantastic. yeah so so that happened and I went through this huge change that year um and then when I left Naples and I was back in Dublin then eventually that's when I started drawing again like I said um in in 2017 that's mm. the yeah so it was like a catalyst that your time in Naples and these relationships that you had like a catalyzing kind of event would you say yeah, absolutely. It, you know, it just it was like like I said it was it was a different kind of energy that I was in because life in Dublin had really kind of become stagnant and a lot of people that I knew had left. A lot of people that I hung out with before just kind of disappeared off the radar and to a degree I did the same thing, you know, I went really I got really kind of um insular. Insular is exactly the word I was looking for, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, totally. It's late there, I know. <laughs> we'll help each other out. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was yeah, it was all part of um just a huge transformation and and since then um I've just, you know, with the the drawing and the art and uh, my studies, you know, I've been rolling through the whole gamma of of alchemy and tarot and astrology and everything else. Well, in your background, um, you studied philosophy in uh, university, yeah. right? Yeah, I studied philosophy and, and English literature. Are you bringing, um, I mean, everything kind of builds on top of itself, but are you bringing that into your work now, just that um, sort of those those frameworks? Are you bringing that kind of way of thinking to these new modalities, or do you feel like it's infusing your work as well, do you think it was a good foundation? Yeah, I, I think I think that stuff is is always in the background somewhere, you know. Right. Um, yeah, <laughs> definitely. My my sense of of philosophy is is established on that, you know, kind of like having this vague idea of the history of philosophy and 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 how things have unfolded and and what relevance it has today. Um, but really, it seems to me like Eastern philosophies and mystical philosophies, for want of a better term, are kind of in a league of their own. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I, I actually said to my friend, my friend Saul, who taught me astrology, it, it had only been like two weeks um, that we'd been talking about astrology. And... Um, I just felt kind of blown away by the fact that in such a short time learning this the the whole system of astrology it it made so much more of an impact than my three to four years of studying mm-hmm. philosophy had done you know it really kind of it really made an impact well, it hits you on an esoteric level right it's more of a um it can it, you know if you if you are open to it, because um, it is an occult science and occult, it, the occult is the, you know, non-physical side of ourselves, essentially. I mean, there's many ways to describe it. It's beyond words again, but um, it is an occult art. And I think that everyone, I've been contemplating this a lot lately, I feel like everyone has their own approach to it. Um, like I've been trying to, you know, I've been contemplating my, what is my approach to it? What am I doing with it? Because it's not just one thing, right? Um, it hits you on such a metaphysical level and teaches you about yourself on that non-physical plane. Um, and that that's something that just gets laid into you on this, you know, cellular level. And then it's like you... I feel like it's an important part of spiritual practice and, you know, self-mastery for sure. 
I'm really, I'm really happy that happened to you. Um, I feel like I had a similar like catalyzing experience too, where there was just like this energy that is, is different. Um, that was different that was like meant to propel me forward, like propel my, um, development, like yeah. way, like lightning, lightning fast, but just like steps, like way, like many, many steps forward more so than, yeah. Like that's what we we're talking about with like Western philosoph philosophical, um, thought and practice. I feel like a lot of it gets, you know, it gets caught up in the thinking and the mind and the yeah. rationalization of things. And, um, not that it doesn't have merit, but yeah, Eastern and mystical philosophy definitely speaks to us, um, in this nonlinear way that we are not taught, at least in Western society, we're not taught how to do it. And so when we come across it, it's almost like, Oh, and then you start finding other people and that are doing the same thing. And, you know, that's really magical. I feel like a lot of us are going through that right now, especially. <laughs> For sure. Well, um, have you always been a traveler? It sounds like you've been, you've lived in, um, different places, a few different places. Um, yeah, not too many. Like there was, there was Naples. Um, I had like a month long stint in another Italian city after that, which didn't work out. Mm. Um, I'm here in Vietnam. I spent like a summer in Chicago years ago, but, um, yeah, it uh, was, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to say, so you have spent time in the States then? Yeah. Brief, <laughs> brief and enjoyable. Yeah, good, good. I haven't been to Chicago. It's probably like the one biggest city that I haven't been to. Um, let's talk about like what your there's this really deep. I feel like you have this very deep resonance with the land and with the like spiritual ecology. I almost want to call it. I know you've called it something specific, but. Um, your, your last two posts about the immigration, the mass immigration from Ireland, um, what, what is it called again? Yeah. Home and ancestral. Yeah. Understanding. Yeah. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, well, cause you speak about it a lot and, um, on your posts and Instagram as well. And, it's something that, again, hits me on this very, like, beyond words place because it's something that I myself have not contemplated that much. Um, I don't know if that has to do – and I think that being American as well, I, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think that one common thread that comes from being in this land that is very recent, like it's a very recent colonization and experiment. Um, there is kind of this feeling of displacement. I, I feel, and thinking about the land that we're from, um, seems a little, yeah, a little distant and a little foreign almost pun intended. <laughs> What does it what does it mean to you to be from Ireland and to be in a different land and to be drawn back to your home but being from being in different lands and and observing your land from afar essentially That's that's um a great question a huge mm -hmm. question um, Yeah <laughs> Yeah one of the things like you mentioned the word displacement and <clears throat> Really, um, the reason I started, the reason I wrote those, um, or that article at all is because I feel that too here. Being, being here in Vietnam, I feel the sense of displacement and I felt like it kind of, it, it brought me into touch with the general sense of displacement that we get through emigration and because 
because one of the things that I'd been kind of focusing on in recent months was on Garth Moore, the great hunger. Naturally, you know, my thoughts kind of led me to, well, kind of reflecting more on that and, and the two threads kind of came together and I was thinking about what it must have been like for, for people and or people everywhere at any point in history, you know, to, to have to emigrate, to have to leave the, the country that they love, or the, the, probably the only place they've ever known, you know, because for me it's been, you know, like I could... I could very easily wallow in my emotions if I wanted to, you know, it's been kind of difficult, but in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's up, you know, I chose to come here mm-hmm. and I'm happy that I am here. But yeah, all of that just kind of rolled into all of those different, uh, things that I touched upon in, in that article. Um, but yeah, really the, the key point, I guess, for me was because in the summer I had done all of this work, or all of this work kind of happened to me um, in regards to really establishing a genuine relationship to where I was and where I was from, where I am from. Um, it felt, it feels, and even still, like almost as if I'm away from home for the first time ever. Because the relationship is actually there this time, you mm. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I am kind of. I've I've always been interested in America, kind of, um, in a, in a more philosophical sense, like mm-hmm. thinking about the, the very roots of America and what it is, and you know, it's a, it's a very interesting place. There's there's lots to it. There's lots to consider. Mm-hmm. And it gets more and more interesting, I feel, the more the time goes on. Um, mm. In a personal sense, my attraction to it kind of increases. But, yeah, I, it kind of trips me out a little to imagine what it must be like as an American. Like yourself, you have an awareness that America is a young, it's a young nation. Mm-hmm. And like you said, the sense of displacement and yeah, uh, for me it's you know I've, Ireland is there and I'm sure I might have other ancestry too, but it's you know it must feel really odd to not have that kind of mm-hmm. foundational sense of you know this is where I'm originally from. Yeah, it does, um, and even in mystical practice, you know, it's usually recommended that you work with the land you work with your ancestral heritage and um you know when it comes to being essentially an amalgamation of many lands <laughs> it's very confusing and you feel it's almost like it gets to this point where it's like well i'm just watered down i'm a little bit of a lot of things i'm a little bit of you know all of the uk i'm a little bit of french i'm a little bit of this and so what does that mean and that's a really big question and contemplation. And I think that it's something that your work was really inspired. Your writing was really inspiring me in that way because it it's something that I just didn't, I almost put aside. And I think a lot of us do. We put it aside because it's like, well, what do you, what do you do? Like, I think, and I'm kind of envious of you know, of, of Europeans who, you know, for the most, and like you said, I'm sure there's different, you know, inter, uh, blending of, of lineages, but for the most part, like, you know, Northern European is Northern European, like, and British is British and for the most part. And, um, there's something really special about that. And there's also the, so, yeah, it's really it, – not that it is so difficult to work with our ancestors. I mean, we work with our ancestors because I think that what can happen is, is like, we think of our ancestors as the the people that, yeah, gave up a lot, that risked a lot. Like, they're, they're risk takers. They were pioneers. They were fleeing, you know, possibly. So there's a lot of that – 
I wouldn't call it all trauma. I'm sure it was traumatic. Um, but the, yeah, the idea that just, that's the word that keeps coming up is displacement. Um, I am in my own life, in my own incarnation, I was born in Texas. I was born in the South and that's a place that people really are like, you know, proud of where they're from and the, and the heritage and everything. And, and of course I am in some ways, I know that it, it did shape me, but it never felt like home. Um, so this is a, a concept that I've just always been, um, has always been a part of me, my, but what has the land that has magnetized me or attracted me is the Northwest, which is where I am now. It's actually brought me here twice for no rational reason, no logical reason that I can discern. It just pulls me here because there's something about it. Um, so that's kind of how I do it. And I think a lot of us do. We're just attracted to places if we're energetically sensitive and we work with that land. Um, so that's, that's what I've, what I've been doing. Um, but yeah, when it comes to ancestor work, um, I kind of at a, at a loss because it's, it feels watered down and like you have to make it what it, you know, you have to make it something meaningful because there is no like place to go necessarily. Yeah, I could uh, see that you, there's a lot of, there's a lot more independence, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned how the Northwest has pulled you. Um, and I think that's a, that's a wonderful way to, to live, you know, just to feel um, these places call to you and, and follow that. Um, yeah, and I'd say like even, even in a general sense, you know, if you, if you know that you have certain European lineage, you know, then there's, there's nothing to say that you can't, you know, try if you want for size, if you will, Mm -hmm. you know. But I mean, even still, you know, if you're, if you're Irish or if you're from any part of the United Kingdom, mm-hmm. even if you're French or, or, or Germanic, you know, all of that ties into Celtic history. So you've got a huge kind of plethora of, of culture. Absolutely. Into the, but yeah, I, I mean, I do, I do feel for you. Not that it's like really amazing and, and easy for me. As someone who isn't American, but I, I can I can understand where you're coming from, totally. Do you um, find yourself being pulled back to Ireland now? Like, yeah, do you think you'll uh, go back soon? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I will be back um, after or during the summer um, later this year. But for how long, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really know what life is going to be like um, after after I'm done in this part of the world. But yeah, mm-hmm. well, de- I'm definitely feeling a strong pull, and I have been more or less since I settled here. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been listening to lots of Irish traditional music that I probably wouldn't listen to at home. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, you know, um, yeah, and it I, is... It, sorry, no, it is true what you said in the in your article about um, it's I, I realized this the first time I moved to the Northwest. Um, it actually taught me about where I was from, even more being on the outside and observing or observing the contrast and how I contrasted, you know, with with the new land or or whatever. Um so yeah, I know what you mean. Like you, you end up doing the, like I end up doing more Texas things here. Like, you know, the other day I had like, I had to have Tex-Mex food and I was listening to Selena, like Tejano, like I would never listen, you know, do those things, but it was just a thing. I had to put myself in that place where it, it felt a bit more familiar or something. Um, it's comforting. I know what you mean. Um, I did want to talk about you had brought up when we spoke before about um, if you, you know, are inspired to, you've been 
working with shamanic plant medicine, correct? Um, um, yeah, in theory. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean to you? And um, I mean, how how were you uh, bringing that into your own practice? And um, so it began. A lot of these kind of things opened up for me um, in the springtime and the summer when I took Asia Solar's course. I don't know if you know um, mm -mm. One, One Willow Apothecaries. She runs this amazing online course every year um, called Intuitive Plant Medicine, I think, if I recall correctly. Um, and yeah, there were a lot of there were a lot of different elements to that course, and so I learned, um, you know, I was learning about the shamanic journey, I was learning about developing intuition, um, plant medicine in general, flower essences, all that kind of jazz. And, yeah, through the meditations and the work that I was doing in that course, um, I connected with, with Rose, and that was my... As, as a plant ally, and that was the first time I've ever, ever done anything like that, and I kind of went into, I went into the whole thing with just this naivety, like, okay, let's, I've no idea what to expect, let's just go with this, and all of these incredible things started happening, and, mm. and um, so yeah, I was, I was given this, like a, a mantra, an intention, and I was, I felt like I was connecting to this, this plant, this plant being, and I, you know, I I did some artwork on it too. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to to explain in any kind of cohesive way. But I know I've I've for some reason taken up the helm of having a podcast where we talk about things that are beyond words. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I completely understand. <laughs> I just like that you're bringing in, you know, many different practices or many different modalities into your, your practices. And I mean, speaking of astrology, do you mind if I share a little bit about your, what I know about your chart? Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, go ahead. Cause you're feeling a lot of, um, you're feeling a lot of heaviness right now. A lot of the heavies. Yeah, I can only imagine because you have a stellium in Capricorn, correct? Or you have multiple personal planets in Capricorn? Yeah, there's, there's Venus, Mars, Mercury. And your sun, right? Or no? And no. Um, and Uranus and Neptune and the North Node. Jesus. <laughs> And Sarah is too, just to throw that in there. That's also. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah that's and so we're also going, and which is your fourth house, we're both like Libra rising. Um, yeah. So I can, that's why I bring it up because, um, you know, ta the I, I'm just kind of seeing the way that your work is transpiring and talking about, because the fourth house is the land and the, and, you know, your lineage, tradition, uh, home, you know. In an esoteric sense, the inner home, right? Like the the innermost person, like the most private um, person, the inner self. And right now, we just have so much heavy. I mean, of course, anyone that's following astrology, we we're leading up to you know 2020, where we have the conjunction between Saturn and Pluto. Um. And, and Jupiter and, 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 um, which I, I feel like, it, you know, we can pontificate about all the things that, that means, but essentially it is, you know, catalyzing huge changes and transformation and, in, in structures and what I feel, you know, what we, what we think of as home and what we, what we think of, um, what what structures should be in place essentially and i feel like your work with the i can see that happening all of that energy concentrated in your fourth house with the work you're doing and working with the land like it's very literal for you um so i don't know i just wanted to 
to kind of share that and I feel for you. <laughs> I mean, my moon, my moon is there, but, uh, which is, I, you know, I don't, I don't feel like, and I don't say that I, I don't feel, say I feel for you in that I feel like you're going through something that is like turmoil, but it seems like it's very, um, just very important especially with your with your north node there i mean as as we collectively are releasing ancestral trauma and looking at the past looking at the things that have come before us so that we can move forward i feel like you're in a unique position to make the observation of make the observations about like ec ec you know spiritual ecology and what like the spiritual dimension of the land does that does that resonate with you because when you write about the land and ancestry it's it it's very very deep deeply resonant with me especially i think with a, a lot of people i mean i know you you have great um people are responding very strongly to your words um so i hope that you keep doing it <laughs> i'm sure that you will keep doing it um, i'm really pleased that you feel like it's it's resonating that stuff on home yeah um it it does feel really important to me and it feels like way way bigger and wider than i can kind of conceive you know i'm just kind of i'm stumbling in the dark in some respects um but yeah for sure the the energy is is heavy absolutely um yeah i'm just I'm trying to go as easy as I can and, you know, like we all are because Saturn is, is there for all of us. It's not just me. Mm. Um, so everyone knows what it's like. Um, one of the things that I've kind of been thinking about lately is um, the fact that I have my Saturn is conjunct my son in the fifth house. Mm. So I've kind of been easing into accepting this idea that a lot of people say that's going to be, you know, that's the mark of uh, a late bloomer, if you will. You know. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and I'm coming around to accepting that, you know, and just mm -hmm. trying to, yeah. I mean, the, the walk on the walk on home fascinates me, especially, especially in terms of ancestry. And I mean, that's a realm that I'm only beginning to, to tread, you know. Um, and even as, as well with with Angorta Moor, the Great Hunger. Um, there's such a huge, there's like a chasm in in Irish culture in in our in our heads, in our psychologies regarding that. It's like it, it's there's an empty space there because we, it, it it was less than 200 years ago when when yeah. it happened, and. Anytime anyone ever speaks about like you know d what did what did your elders say about that you know you know what is your does your great grandfather say and to your granddad about that and it's always just no they they could never speak about it. they could never tell mm. us anything anyone who remembered any kind of even second third hand actual information about w what that was like is just it's not there it's it's really not there and. What do you mean exactly? Like they don't want to talk about it, or there's a real lack of qualitative information. Wow. Um, because one of the one of the things that I've been kind of living inside recently was um, a, a record by an Irish musician, and and it's called Chronicles of the Irish Famine, and it's it's a song that this guy was. It's an album that this guy had been walking on for 15 years when he talks about how he struggles to find actual stories about the family you know so much of the literature is quantitative it's about numbers and, and mm. statistics and fascinating Irish people in general we don't know much about it in terms of what it was actually like it's still something that we haven't got around to actually fully remembering that's my feelings mm. on the whole. 
So it's it's something that I really feel passionate about, kind of delving into. You know, I'm I'm learning about it myself now. You know, that's what I'm doing. In order yeah. to get to a point where I can write on it in more detail. Yeah. So you're really doing the work of looking to the past. Um, I have, there's, there's a lot of resources um, as well that I'm using. You know, there's there's a fantastic podcast. Um, called the Irish History Podcast by oh. Findwar, and he he has this really comprehensive um, series on the famine, and it's one of the most amazing things I've ever heard. So I've been really using that as well to try and you know get some get some understanding. Do you think you'll do more research when you go back to to Ireland? Yeah, I'd really love to. Um, I have this kind of crazy idea of, of touring the country. On a bicycle. Oh my God! <laughs> yes. Oh, how feasible that is, but like, there's. I mean, it's it's a small country, relatively speaking, but there's so much of it that I want to see. There's so so much. It just feels like the only way to do it is to actually just go around, you know, on a tour, as it were. And so speak yeah, to people. <laughs> I'll do that one day. Mhm. Wow, that's that's so fascinating. Yeah, I have to admit my my ignorance or naivete. I didn't, I wasn't really aware of the Great Famine, which I, I mean, yeah, I have you know Irish blood somewhere, and so that's really fascinating to know that like that is even um, a cause of a lot of displacement yeah. and immig- and immigration. Um. So yeah, that's I'm I'm really looking forward to hearing more about that. It's really interesting with working I'm going to get far out like some like I do sometimes, but even working with ancestry and lineage there like cuz you were saying it's this really big, you know, uh space or um a very esoteric space. And even when you when you think about like, are we when you think of it in a linear time frame? I don't know quite what I'm trying to say, but even when you think of it like outside of time, yeah. like the eternal now, like what does that even mean, man? You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, what is ancestry at that point? Yeah, those are two things that I like have absolutely no idea how to reconcile right now. You know, it's like I know it feels like two totally different ways. Of looking at reality, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I've been trying to reconcile that that too, because um, I'm very like timelines are very difficult for me to grasp. Like history is very difficult. Like I can understand the concepts and like the the flux and the patterning of humanity and society and everything. But when you start talking about like the linear the linear uh, formation of things. There's something there that feels like a concept or that feel when you think about like with history, all we really have as proof is, is, you know, written texts or, um, objects, but we don't really know what happened. Like there's millions and millions of stories that we don't, you know, we have never heard. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times all we're doing is, you know, filling in the blanks from relics that we find. I do want to say the artwork that you've been putting out recently is is different and very um, very elegant. There's something very elegant about it, and like not to be literal, I know you use the color gold a lot, but it is very golden. Like there's, it has this um, subtle opulence about it. Again, very organic. Um, where do you do you know like kind of where it's coming from, or what you've been feeling lately that's bringing that about? Um, I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see what you mean. There's kind of like a, a resplendence. Yes. Um, albeit subtle. Yeah. Um. No, I've actually. I'm in a bit of a lull right now, so I feel kind of disconnected from Mm. everything. 
everything in the past yeah. and whatever is in the future. I don't know. I feel like, uh, you know, I need a, a little energetic break. I um, understand. To kind of come back at things. The interesting thing about it for me is that more or less since I've been settled here, the circle has kind of... It's funny because I, I started, when I started drawing again after all this time, I was like, just draw a circle. If you've seen, if you have seen my freehand drawing, you'd understand why I use a compass, right? I'm <laughs> really bad at actual drawing. But, um, so I was just drawing circles all the time. And then after being here for about a month or so, I was sitting down and I drew a circle. Like I always, I just start with a circle and I was like, it felt so wrong. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. this is and and so the square. I, I don't I don't know if it's just a coincidence, but like a lot of the architecture you see here is square. There's a lot of Buddhist kind of square, mm. Buddhist, you know. Mm-hmm. The square is rocking here in Vietnam. <laughs> Some strange and bizarre reason, perhaps just coincidence. Huh? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah, one of my favorite esotericists um, and philosopher uh, philosophers, Neil Kramer, he talks about uh, in his own system, he has um, square, uh, there's square energy, triangle energy, and then circle energy. And square energy is essentially man. Because if you look in nature, there, there aren't any squares. There's no right angles. And then, yeah, circle energy is essentially, you know, everything. Cycles. Um, That's really fascinating. It seems like you're really um, affected by and inspired by your surroundings. Yeah, um, um, which is funny because I wouldn't have thought so myself. It was just that observation, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. It was just so striking when I when when I I did that I drew the circle that time. It it never felt like that before, you know. You know when something just strikes you immediately, no, like this is just wrong. Mm. It was really weird. Yeah. Who knows? yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm actually glad that I realize this is kind of I mean, we're in January of two thousand nineteen and it it does feel like a bit of Maybe maybe a holding pattern or an in between space for for all of us really. Um, I mean, I'm kind of in between as well. I mean, talk about fourth house. <laughs> I just like moved from my house <laughs> and um, living with family and don't know where the next place is going to be. But you just have to to roll with it. So yeah, it feels like this transitional space. Um, in so many ways, like, I mean, I know you and I have talked about like how, how it's interesting, like feeling into, you know, how to make a livelihood and how to, um, you know, do your work, um, produce your work from a really, from a very real and honest place, but, you know, still be able to maintain and and pay the bills and everything. That's really a huge conversation. And, contemplation I feel um, a lot of us are going through and I think that just takes living day by day and seeing how you know the energies coming in are are helping us with that I I'm kind of feeling that way are you feeling like there's I mean I know that there's heaviness and everything but I feel like there's grace in that heaviness it doesn't feel oppressive to me I don't feel like it's restrictive, if that makes sense. Do you, do you agree? I feel like it's this good kind of graceful discipline. And mind you, I'm very Saturnian as well. I have Saturn directly conjunct my ascendant. So I know what you mean. It's like second half of life is probably going to be like banging. <laughs> like <laughs> finally get get a handle on what's going on and be able to do things. But yeah, there's, there, there seems to be, and I'm just prattling on. I mean, do you, do you agree that there, there's like this grace in this kind of 
heaviness or, or discipline. It doesn't feel like I'm being punished. It doesn't feel like there's this restriction and I can't do anything. It just feels like you need to, uh, the message I've been kind of getting is like work with the material, like bring the non, the non-physical into the physical. And that takes time. Kronos. That's what Saturn tell, you know, teaches us. I don't know. I feel that totally. Um, because l- like you said, it is heavy. But it's not it's not oppressive, it's not restrictive. I feel quite content. Yeah. Just to sit like and I know even in in my life in, in the surface reality, I'm I'm able to sit most of this month out. I'm just kind of you know, I'm being with it and I'm not fussing too much a bit mm. over and, and over what whatever will come. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. I feel Excellent. Well, I definitely want everyone to follow your work and I'm really excited about following your work from here, especially when you get back to Ireland and report on what you find. All right, my friend. Well, where can people um, talk about, you know, a little bit about where you are online and your Patreon and everything? Yeah. So um, I'm on Instagram at underscore selenic and yeah patreon too there's um there's a bit more happening over there um you know some more some exclusivity and stuff but yeah i try to try to get to everywhere Mhm. all right cool well thank you so much again for meeting with me and i hope you have a restful night <laughs> and a restful trip it's been a pleasure Take care. You too. Wow, I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Stephen as much as I did. To follow his work, you can find him at underscore Selenic, S-E-L-E-N-I-C on Instagram and at patreon.com slash Selenic. This podcast is already a supporter of his life and craft, and I urge you to consider becoming a patron as well to fund his trip to Ireland. Thank you for listening, guys, and as always, take care out there.